welcome back to Rorick Knows Podcast, helping you become a better you. Let's talk about rhinoplasty myths. There's so many myths about plastic surgery, especially about rhinoplasty. But let's, let's look at the top 10 myths behind rhinoplasty and let's understand the truth behind these m common misconceptions. As a rhinoplasty expert, I talk about this all the time. And so let's start out with uh, myth number one is, um, you know, rhinoplasty should only, can only be done for aesthetic reasons. And that's totally untrue. In fact, when I do an aesthetic rhinoplasty, I wanna make sure I maintain and or restore function as well because the nose is not only uh, one of uh, objectivity, but also, you know, for cosmetic look, but also for function. So the key is you have to restore and maintain nasal function, if at all possible, and that's very important to do. And so you have to be understand how to manage the septum and all of the internal nasal valves and everything. So, so this could nothing be further from the truth. You know, a true rhinoplasty surgeon does the septum and the function, and they're hand in hand. In fact, they're as important. So when you see a patient like this, that's got a very significant septal deviation airway problem and a significant nasal airway problem, but also a significant cosmetic deformity, of course you want to straighten the nose, the septum, make sure you not only make the nose look great, but also maintain and restore function. So that is so important to do in a patient like this. And she looks absolutely amazing, but her nose still functions as good or even better because her septum is now straight. So also, all the results are immediate, just like you see on Instagram. That is so untrue. That's why it's so important to show that's why I like to show immediate post-ops. I like to show them at the reveal because the reason is because people need to show, see that when you take the splint off, it's not just a perfect result. You see swelling, you see bruising, that's okay. That takes months to see the final results. It takes usually, for a primary, it takes 12 to 15 months. For a secondary, it takes two years or longer. So it's important to show that and to see that. So when you see a patient like this, she's now almost two years post-op, of course she looks good because she's now had normal wound healing and swelling going down. But at a month post-op, she was swollen and just like, you know, normal because the tip of the nose and the dorsum takes a long time to, for the swelling to go down. It takes months for it to do so. So you can show both. That's why social media is important to show it, to show the early and the, the long post-op. And then probably one of the biggest myths that gets people in trouble is anybody can perform a rhinoplasty. Well, that is so untrue. And in fact, the most important thing is, the most important chance for getting a success in rhinoplasty is choosing your surgeon wisely. Find a rhinoplasty expert that has the expertise, the experience that can deliver exceptional results, the three E's. And it's either a board certified plastic surgeon or a board certified facial plastic surgeon. So it's either an otolaryngologist or a plastic surgeon that has specific experience and expertise in rhinoplasty. That's critical, bar none. Now, here's another myth. A rhinoplasty leaves no scars. Well. There's open and closed rhinoplasty. They both leave scars. One leaves them on the inside, some leave them on the outside. But basically, the result really identifies with the great, res the result really defines a rhinoplasty. And today, even an open rhinoplasty, it's almost imperceptible to see the scar or even the aortic base incision, but you'll have some type of scar. But the key is an open rhinoplasty in my hands is actually the, the utility and the tool that I use to get the best results. So it doesn't leave, it leaves minimal scarring, but there, there's no such thing as a, a no scar rhinoplasty. Now, the next myth is the results are permanent. Well, that's not necessarily true. That's why it's good to show the short, intermediate, and long-term results. And I will show results that one year, three year, five years or longer, and the results change and they age. And that's why it's important to Know before you go and understand how the nose ages and the face ages, so you do techniques that will withstand the test of time. And so when you see a patient like this pre-op at three years, 12 years, and 25 years, you can see the durability of the nose has maintained its strength and the tip shape and contour. And I think that's important to do techniques and use technology that maintains nasal tip, dorsum, and function 
long term. That is critical. And then another myth is that anyone can give you a perfect nose. That's not true. A rhinoplasty cannot give everyone a perfect nose. In fact, I've never done a perfect rhinoplasty, and I've done over 8,000 rhinoplasties. I mean, it's a something to seek. And but you know, a great nose is one that's in harmony with the patient's face, nose, eyes, lips, and chin. That's a harmonious rhinoplasty. And in fact, I saw a patient today that came back and said, you know what, I am so happy with my rhinoplasty, and it's a male patient, because no one really knows what I had done. They just say, hey, you look good, you look like you're in shape, and I think that's great. So that's the sign of great plastic surgery is that nobody knows. And, and of course, that's why you see so much bad plastic surgery in, in some of the famous celebrities, and, and it's very, it's really distraughtful to see patients that have really had bad plastic surgery, especially rhinoplasty. Now, here's another myth. Rhinoplasty is a very painful procedure. Now, I will tell you that in most cases it is not, but sometimes you will have some discomfort, especially if you have a lot of septal surgery. So if I'm gonna do septal surgery or I have a very deviated nose or a secondary rhinoplasty, I will tell the patient they may have 24 hours of some discomfort, and of course we provide you know pain medications or or anything to help modulate that. But that's very important. So, really, is in general, it should not be a, a painful procedure, but it can be discomforting because you can't breathe because you'll have splints in your nose. So that's not untrue. So, and then another myth is that recovery is quick; it's no problem. And of course, it's the social media, Instagram, quick. And basically, a rhinoplasty. Recovery is about a week to 10 days. At a week, we take your splint out, your stitches out, except for those on the sides, the ailer bases. So recovery can take 10 days or so. Swelling can last up to two weeks. And of course, the swelling and everything takes months to resolve, especially for a primary rhinoplasty, it takes 12 months to resolve. For a secondary, it's longer. So recovery is gradual. So know before you go. You have to be informed so that you can anticipate what the recovery is and manage postoperative expectations. And that's why I have a lot of videos about post-op care, the four steps for maximizing post-op care, and to maximize a speedy recovery. All these things are on my uh, Roic Nose podcast, but also they're on my YouTube channel. So, so please resort to those, and you can see and find a lot of information that's very rich and tells you exactly what, what to expect after rhinoplasty. And, and I think th that's very, very important because the post-op care is incredibly important and it's meticulous. And, and I'm just sharing with you in the management of how I do post-op care management with both nasal cord, nasal sprays, and of course, the use of um, mucopiercin ointment that is in the, uh, in the inside the nose that's so critical. And then of course, the role of steri strips in the management of post-operative swelling. And that's really critical in that. So the other thing is, Rhinoplasty is just for females. Well, that's totally untrue. I would say 15, 20% of my patients are males and they undergo the rhinoplasty for both the same aesthetic and functional reasons as females. And, you know, and I think that males uh, can be a little bit more challenging because you really have to understand their rationale for having a rhinoplasty, but it's a great operation in a patient uh, that has both functional and aesthetic uh, challenges like this patient who's now a 13-year follow-up, excellent male patient, functional and aesthetic shaping and contouring, nice dorsum, great dorsal profile, shaping and contouring is great, 13-year follow-up, these are all things that are great. And another myth is that the results are, can be predicted with complete accuracy. Well, that's not true because no matter what you do, that's why it's so important to select your, your surgeon, whether they have the incredible expertise, skill, uh, to do the procedure, but in the end, it's about how you individually heal and how, and how that impacts your genetic makeup. So no matter what you do, even if you have an excellent rhinoplasty surgeon, you can have a not so perfect outcome. And that's why you can, there's a need for revision in two to 3% of patients, certainly that I do. And the revision rate in, in, in the literature is far higher than that. But no one has ever had, I've never done a perfect rhinoplasty, but it all depends on how you heal. You can, that's why it's so important to get the best results you can interoperatively, and then it's up to God and wound healing. So it's really important to understand that. And then, then these patients that come in that have revision rhinoplasty, these patients had 
multiple previous rhinoplasties, I think seven previous rhinoplasties, and she's had a foreshortened nose, deviated septum, perforated septum, all these incredible problems, and she had imp removal of implants, we put in rib grafts, we shaped her nose, we, we, tape, we did all kinds of things. Here she is at 10 days post-op, here she is at 11 months post-op, and here she is, again, uh, almost 11 months here, and then you can see her at uh, three years post-op, she's got improvement, she's got nasal shape and contour, she's, her nose is elongated, her tip shape is great, she can now breathe through her nose, she's now no longer a social recluse, she really looks great, and she really now looks proportionate to her face and chin. And I think those are all the things that are challenging in revision rhinoplasty. So there's no such thing as a perfect result. And then, and when you have a, a patient like this that's really had a devastated multiple previous procedures, it takes a lot of experience and expertise to get you a result that's both functionally and aesthetically pleasing. So I think the most important thing here to understand in these myths is know before you go, select a true board certified plastic surgeon or facial plastic surgeon that's an expert in rhinoplasty and that can dispel these myths in the preoperative consult and be there with you throughout the postoperative wound healing process. So hopefully this has helped you become a more educated and smart you, and please leave me your comments and thoughts.